Vamos a empezar con la información del Volkswagen Golf 2015 con Kevin Yostema, que es el uh, vicepresidente de Product Planning de Volkswagen para Estados Unidos. So Kevin, thank you for having us here in San Francisco for the presentation of the seventh generation of Golf, huh? one of the most important cars for uh, Volkswagen all around the world. Yeah, absolutely, and my pleasure to have you here. Yeah, so 40 years of Golf, uh, seven generations, uh, a lot has changed and, and not really because this keeps being uh, that fantastic car that is pretty much everything in one car. Performance, utility, and all those kind of things. Design. Absolutely. I mean, we're just pulling on the best of what it has had since its very first generation. The versatility with the cargo room and the hatch design, the offering of two and four doors, and most importantly, some of our most advanced powertrains that we have globally are represented in Golf. Yeah. So the Golf, when it debuted, it, it was basically kind of a replacement for the Beetle. And now, it's, is it the most important car for uh, Volkswagen in, in terms of sales, or the Passat and the Jetta? Like, uh, use some more of those. Uh, globally, it, Golf is definitely it represents Volkswagen. Here in the United States, our portfolio, as we continue to diversify it, Jetta is our highest volume right now, but Passat is clipping on its heels once we have introduced that, and now we're selling over 10,000 of those per month. And now we are doing the same with the Mark 7 golf and golf family yeah that we will be have this as another core pillar of what we are supporting our u.s sales volume and growth with uh, into the future and one of the limitation i guess was uh volume right of production and now that has changed also because now the golf is going to be built in mexico and we, Puebla. we continue our progress with the localization of powertrains and localization of product um, manufacturing into the north america region We, next wave is another $7 billion of investment. Part of that investment is covering the expansion of production line in Puebla to build Golf and GTI, and also the continued increase in output of the new uh, facility in Silao, Mexico, for our, the core powertrains here, the 1.8 TSI and the 2.0 TSI. Great. So the new Golf, uh, it comes in, uh, what, six different variants? Uh, well, we first have our three powertrain variants for uh, Golf and GTI. So there's a 2.0 TSI, the latest generation of that in the GTI. We then have two powertrains in the Golf, which is again the newest generation of the 1.8 TSI. And the new generation of our TDI clean diesel, which has an additional 10 horsepower now. And on top of those three variants, we will continue throughout this calendar year and into early 2015, introducing our first battery electric vehicle based on Golf Mark 7 platform that will come at the end of 2014. We then have the Golf Sport Wagon, which is a great seller for us, even enhances further utility and offering a combination with our TDI powertrain. And finally, we will also have the next iteration, our fourth iteration ever, of the Golf R. Yeah. Uh, a car that a lot of people uh, always wait for uh, uh, with very anxiously, right? Well, I'd like to, I mean, uh, there's so much to talk about with the Mark 7, and one of those is we are answering everything that the enthusiast community has been asking us to do with the next generation of, of Golf GTI. It's the basis for Golf R. We're bringing the Golf R right away. We're not waiting another three years, like we had to wait for the third iteration. We're doing it right away as an active part of the life cycle. Um, We are offering now for the first time an optional performance package on GTI on top of the 2.0 uh, TSI engine. You can get an additional 10 horsepower, larger brakes front and rear, and a unique limited slip differential. We call it VAQ internally that helps put some of the power to the outer wheel when going around turns. Um, those very, the powertrains will also continue into um, the sport wagon offerings as well. Yeah, and uh, one thing uh, that I don't know if I, I missed, but uh, there was a Golf Cabri at one point, right? Uh, there has been in our history, both here and there exists now in the global portfolio, a Golf Cabrio, yes. That is based on the sixth generation Golf. Yeah, so with no plans for that for now? We have our convertible presence. The convertible segment has really shrunk quite a bit here in the U.S. Oh, really? uh, after 2008, the kind of economic downturn. Mm -hmm. And it really, that's the one segment that has had no recovery. It's still at very low levels. So our focus in the convertible area is our Beetle uh, convertible, also coming out of Globalize in North America, and all of the three powertrains you can get that with. It's the only TDI convertible available. And we also have the end of our life cycle going on with the EOS. 
the yeah. only hard top convertible with a sunroof. We are still selling EOS and look forward to it. Oh, you're, co you're covered in the convertible <laughs> <laughs> segment. <laughs> so going back to this, now we're driving the, the diesel, the TDI. Mm -hmm. And this is a fantastic new technology. I mean, we're like driving, doing the interview, taping it. And we don't hear any external noise or anything, especially with the some idea that some people might have with the old uh, old diesel engines. Nothing, like, not nothing of that here. No, and the the drive performance of our TDI clean diesel is fantastic. The torque we get with 236 pound feet of torque, it, it it's equivalent to driving a a V6 or something in terms of the driving feel, the seat of your pants feel. And now the new generation gets an additional 10 horsepower. The rating is up to 150 horsepower for the powertrain. And it is as smooth, as quiet as our normally aspirated um, uh, 1.8 TSI, as you as you point out here. We don't yeah. And so with the diesel, you get almost the equivalent uh, performance uh, in MPG as a, almost like a hybrid, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the new powertrain has a plus one combined sit, uh, highway and city rating of 35 that's up plus one from the uh, prior model year and on the highway you get 42 miles per gallon depending on the platform that the TDI powertrain is mated with we also get on uh, 43 with the Passat and depending on the tank you have it contributes to incredible range for your car the amount of time in between fill-ups and that's where it's not only comparable to hybrids but even better than hybrids because hybrids usually have a compromised smaller tank uh -huh. for the gasoline so the range of a tdi is dramatically larger than hybrids okay and talking about another different range uh, price range so you, you can start like uh, you have a special edition for uh, to launch the the seventh generation that, and then like uh, what's the range of the prices that's one of the things i'm uh most excited about for the tdi powertrain we're bringing a new trim level offer for the Launcher Golf, an S trim that starts at $21,995. This is almost $3,500 lower starting price for our TDI powertrain on the Mark 7 than what we had with the previous generation. On our TSI, uh, 1.8 TSI engine, we are also uh, bringing for launch um, an entry point of $17,995 for a wow, two-door manual. That's really low. Which for the category and versus competitors, it is a strong statement and really helps define how we continue to lead this category, the A hatch, the compact hatch segment. Yeah, and then what's the most you can spend on a, on a new Golf? Um, with the Golf GTI, it goes up to 30695 on top of which you can put that performance package that I mentioned. We also are excited to bring from the enthusiast community, you can get a Golf GTI with DCC, adaptive damping. Hmm. So we've taken, we haven't left anything from our global technology portfolio off of the offering of the Golf in the US. And so uh, top stuff stops like 35 and you get like fantastic uh, top 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 you can also everything. put on with those two um, performance issues put on top and then plus you can put the um, by xenon lights on it on the front as well as the driver safety uh, driver assistance systems uh, the top is still tops out at about 34,000, which is the equivalent of what our current generation tops out at with the GTI Auto. That's amazing. I always think about that when I come to this presentation. They tell like they they bring more stuff into the car, and then the prices keep going down or stay it's, the same. That's how you make the the value equation. You know, you talk in the yeah. industry. That's how you keep consumers showing the 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 value you put into the car and why consumers want to choose your offering yeah. maybe over somebody else and then like also technology has allowed to bring down costs i guess and expand the the application of those things into more models certainly that's something we strive for especially on the electronics end of yeah. it we have our new newest generation on golf also of our mib infotainment system it starts with a standard 5.8 inch touchscreen on the base cars it's fantastic our base cars before didn't have touchscreens yeah and that's what then enables you it's not so much the cost comes down but what you can do with that system lets you do more and more we have rear view cameras can be on every trim level we have um, other types of car information that can be shared over it. Bluetooth, of course, is standard and has steering wheel controls. This car has a new steering wheel design. Yeah, That's everything. not something necessarily cost down, but it has much more functionality and capabilities. Yeah, and then this is where the first impression goes. So if yeah, people start so touching we it. We have piano like black exactly, trim yeah. accents. It looks rich from the start. 
it's not a cheap plastic wheel. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Kevin, for your time and the opportunity to drive. And I see here you have all the generations of all golfs. So that, that was one of the funner projects of the last half of year in my job and my teams was helping our communications department find one representative of all six genera prior generations from Mark 1 to Mark 6 of uh, the GTIs. So, so a little bit fun. of a history lesson here driving. Yes, yes. So <laughs> well, please enjoy them. Thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting. Thank you.